So what we want to, yep. So what we want to do is go to Think Java. Uh, Trinket. I I went to Trinket.io. Uh, so if you Google Think Java, right, you you'll that's the course textbook, right? Either you have a PDF of it, or you can go to the HTML version, or you can go to the interactive version. Um, you want to grab this code. Public static class drawing extends Canvas. So here. I'm not sure how you, we type in google.com, think Java. And then we can either look at the PDF, okay, or we can click on the Trinket link. Then you can go to Appendix B. All right, and this is what this is. is this essentially, all this code that you're going to have to So what this is, is that this is a lot of um, essentially steps, a lot of hoops to jump through to give us access to something called a, um, sorry, to give us access to something called a graphics panel. And we're just going to use this later on to, uh, and remember to copy all the imports in. So all these imports need to be in your program as well. Um, yeah, my, my copying just simply just put it all on one line. But if we run this, it should pop up with a screen that draws a black circle on your screen, right? So, and what this is is that this is all done with objects and object-oriented programming. And what we're going to see how to do is we're going to see how to basically, um, well, define shape. Uh, we're going to define some basic shapes, and we're going to see how how to basically display them. We're going to essentially, uh, we're we're essentially going to um, write some of the features that already. We're going to rewrite some of the features that already exist, like being able to draw ovals. But essentially. Uh, what's important, all that's really important is this paint method down here, which we will be using to uh, draw shapes that we created, right? So um, previously we had created a point class, right? Right, and a point just simply has X and Y attributes, right? So what's nice about that is like if I create... So everybody here, they've got the code copied in, right? What's here is that, like, if I want to draw a line, which is some, what is a line? It's a line segment's basically defined by two points, right? Having two points. So let's create two points. Do we have? Uh, we haven't learned how to. We haven't built our constructor for a point. So let's review. We have three th things that a point can do, right? We have x, y. We have x and y coordinates. We have constructors, which tell us how to build an object, and we had a uh, print coordinates, which allowed us to print it out. So let's go ahead and go back to a uh, point, and let's tell the computer how to build a point, right? We will do a, let's go ahead and make a, what we call a constructor. And we learned how to do that with rectangle. We say public point, right? And we say int, um, Let's go with initial x and initial y. So int initial x, int initial y, and we'll say that x is equal to, x's value is equal to initial x, and y is equal to init y. So now when we go over here to uh, the draw, to the drawing, let's go ahead and create, let's go to the paint method. We'll comment out this, out this oval, okay? And what are we going to do? We are going to draw a couple of things. Oh, be sure to close the, uh, the window if you've still got this running. 
So what are we going to do? We're going to draw. Um, so we're going to go G. We're going to call. We're going to first create two points. The first point we'll call P1. So point P1 is equal to a new point, right? We're creating a new point here, and let's just put it at uh, one comma one, right? Nothing too exciting there, right? It's going to be at x coordinate one, y coordinate one, right? That's how we use a constructor. Point two, right? And now because we've created a constructor, we can't just leave this blank anymore, right? Now remember, all you have to do is actually put in one comma one because this gray stuff is this gray init x and init y. That's just my compiler being super helpful. Point P2 is equal to a new point. And we're going to put that at 100, 100. So now we can use this to basically draw a line. So D dot, and then notice there's a lot of options we can do. Draw a line. And it's asking for four variables. And so my t I like IDs because they have hints. You expect four variables, an X1, a Y1, and an X2, and a Y2. So the X coordinates of the first point and the second point. And that's pretty easy for, for, for us to do. Oh, that's point one's X coordinate. Uh, point one's a y coordinate. Do we actually need a p1 and a p2? Yep, we will. Point two. Did you did you put this in your uh, did you put this in the same area with your as did you put this in the same place as your uh, as the rest of your code? Is it in a new project? from uh, yesterday. Uh, so you want me to put the, the point uh, again? Yes. All right. So let's go ahead. CD. Um, CD classroom. Sorry. Oh, okay. Give me one sec. Boom. Boom. There you go. So this is inside the point. Get uh, Add star dot Java. Right Get yeah. point. Which one is this? this is the point class right now. Get commit. Okay. It well, it's already on. Well, I just uploaded it onto GitHub, so it's there. Um. It should be Andrew Rosen. Avi Rosen. Yeah, 
extend some canvas for those one word. In other words, they reached their own thing, so now we have to do that here because we created, we wanted to create a class called Ron. Name type to the only. Okay, and same, and same thing, it needs to be in the same place where your point object is. So you need a point object. So now, right? Right? So I don't know where this is. Where's this one? In class exercise, right? So let's go ahead and copy it from here. There. That should help. And now you need to make a constructor. So you need to put in the constructor, which was public. Uh, point. It's So you can go here. Go to right, go here. Go to my code on GitHub. Intro. And it's in Yeah, so it's in objects. The objects folder on your intro. Say Now we create a new class point because we already have one that's called point, but if you give it a lowercase, always give your class names in uppercase. Because otherwise, because that's the only way we can do it. Because that we want to be able to tell at a glance whether something is an object type or not. That's why we have why we do that. So now Go. Now it's going to tell you to, what, I have to, what you have to do is yeah. uh, to rename it. Yeah. Okay. So is everybody gotten the point? Load it. And that, you have no errors? I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Wait. Wait. So, so you have to drawing. There's an error. So that's because we get yeah, okay. okay. So, all right. Okay. Not applicable for a double, 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 double. Makes sense. All right. So we'll have to do just a bit more refactoring. Okay. So don't worry about that error for right now. Do P1 dot and P2Y, and you should be getting to an error here that says, hey, you, this is requiring ints, and we just passed it doubles. So we're going to change our code up here in point so that we're using integers instead of doubles. Okay?
that won't take any effort except for changing this into ints. Okay? Because on the coordinate plane we're going to be drawing on, there's only integers. So now when we run this, we'll be able to draw a line between two points. Between, so run this. Does everybody have this? Don't ignore the error. Don't ignore the error. Change the code. Now that's a, now believe it or not this is a draw this is a line from 100 this is a line from point Z, 11 to point 100 and this is because you are used to working on the coordinate the Cartesian coordinate plane which looks as follows right the Cartesian coordinate plane says this is 0 comma 0 right it says that origin point in the middle is 0 comma 0 however you're working on a computer screen so things are different Right? You're working in a square box, essentially. Um, and furthermore, text appears essentially when we, when we do text in a computer screen, it, it, it's here at the top corner. So what we do is that for this coordinate plane, we work in this quadrant over here. Okay? Everybody see up here? This quadrant what is what we're working in. So as a result, this is the coordinate system that we use. There's only positive numbers. And x works just as normal. x is 0 over here, and it goes up to whatever, whatever we decided to go up to. Basically, max it. But the y, y is still positive, but it goes down. So this point was over here was 1, 1, right? 1, 1. And this point over here was 100, 100, and we just draw a point between them. So we just draw, uh, drew a line between them. So that's pretty cool. So we've got something that basically interact. We've got in two objects, and we use them to draw a line. I mean, that's something we haven't done yet on our computers. So, all right. Um, what about this rectangle we've got over here? All right. So as we mentioned, so we were talking about like uh, earlier. We asked what defines a rectangle, right? What defines a rectangle? And we said, hey, it's got a length and it's got a height, right? But the other thing we mentioned that, that, that I think you brought up and mentioned is that it has a point. It, it has points specifically, but we really only need one. The top, if we, right, if you have one point on a rectangle, right, let's say the top, the top left, because that's what we're going to use, then you can figure out the, how, uh, how to draw that rectangle by knowing its length and its height as well, because It'll be length long and height high, and you can draw to get those other points there as well. So we can um, draw a rectangle, but so so here is so we can. So this is going to look weird. So we can define rectangles as also having a point to start with. So there's two types of relationships we have in object-oriented programming, which is what we're doing right now. And we're going to cover the first one here. This kind of relationship is what we call a has a relationship. The other type is a is a relationship, which gets into inheritance. But here we have a has a relationship. A rectangle has a length. It has a height. And it also has a point. Well, so let's add this to rectangle. And if you don't have the rectangle file, go ahead and take a minute to go back to my, uh, to my, um, the code that we wrote yesterday on, um, on GitHub, right, and grab these methods and copy them in. The rectangle. It needs to be in the same, in order to use it, it needs to be in the same folder as the, draw, as the drawing. Don't you need to make another yes, if you didn't do, if you didn't make it yesterday. So we need to go to, um, GitHub slash AB Rosen slash classroom slash code slash intro 
slash objects. Let's see, it doesn't, oh, sorry, intro code. You need to, what was that? I'm trying to make a new class. Which one do we go to? Do we go to new project or new file? New file. A new class would make a new folder for that would be that, mm -hmm. yeah, that we don't, the, it would be a completely new project, right? So intro, sorry, classroom, tree master intro code. Then in objects, then there should be a rectangle class. So down, so, so create that and put that in. So now, once you have that, we'll make a point called top left. Okay. And now we'll need to make a new uh, constructor. Okay, and I'll wait for everybody to get that. Uh, does everybody have the rectangle yet? Okay. Now that we have a point, we can create a uh, public, uh, rec we can create a second constructor. So we can have multiple constructors on these. So a, um, let's see. And again, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change because we're working in the coordinate on the actual drawing plane. We want it. We're going to want to change these uh, ints into these doubles into ints. Okay. So let's make another constructor. So you can have as many constructors as you want. The only thing is, is that each different each constructor has to have a different number of coordinates. So here we had an initial length and an initial height. Here we're going to give it an initial length. an int initial height and a um, we're going to be leaving a minor error in by the way that will come back to later so this won't be the last time we up and we're going to be going to give it a point um, corner we'll call it the corner okay and it's fair constructors again don't do anything complicated you set your the length to the past initial length you set the height equal to the initial height, and we'll set the point uh, to be the corner. So the, sorry, the uh, top left to be equal to the corner. It's been attached to this the entire time. So the next thing we need to do is um, now let's go ahead and draw this. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle over here. Uh, rectangle R is equal to a new rectangle. So now to create a rectangle, we need to give it a um, initial. Well, we need to give it a, whatchamacallit, a initial length. Let's give it a length of, uh, of 100, a height of 200, okay. And then we need to give it a point, a point to act as the corner, like where it exi actually exists. Um, and we could use P1 or P2, but actually you can just create objects wherever, wherever you want. So let's make the corner a new, a new point 
and let's put the put it at 50 50. If you don't like this, you can whoops. If you don't like this, you can put it at P1 instead. So everybody got this line down. We'll create a new rectangle that has a length and you just put down again. Don't type the gray part. That's me put that's guides for you to remember what the each of these numbers are. This is 100 is the initial length. Initial height is 200. Right? And then new point 5050. So G, so let's also, before we do anything, let's do G dot, um, let's change the color a bit. Set color to, and I'll uh, type here, color dot red. And now if we run this, oops, incompatible type. Oh, it says that runner was look using doubles over here, so we got an error. That's just my code. If you don't have runner, then that's fine. So boom, boom. All right, so let's go back to rectangle. Let's go back to our drawing code. G dot set color rectangle R. Oh, right, we created a rectangle, but we didn't do anything with it, right? Um, R dot um, what you call it? Draw. So let's go and do this. G dot uh, draw. And let's see. Is there anything we can put down here? Ah, draw rectangle. It takes in four coordinates: a x position, a y position, and a width and a height. Well, its x position is probably uh, the rectangle. So rectangle R, right? It's probably the R top left, which gets us the point, right, dot x coordinate. So notice that we got, so notice this notation over here, R dot top left dot y, R dot, uh, and it wants a here, a width, that's our, what we, that corresponds to our length, and a R dot height for the height. So let's go and look at the, what I've just typed here. So remember, the dot in here means like this the attribute of something. So here we have a rectangle. So we got its top left attribute, its point, right? So we got the point of this thing. And specifically, and that point, well, we went into that point and we got that point's x coordinate. That makes sense to everybody? We got the rectangle's corner and its top left coordinate. Then we got its we got its top left's y coordinate. Then we got its length, and then we got its height. And we fed them into draw rectangle. And then it drew a rectangle for us. That's pretty nice, right? Not too exciting, I guess, right? But it's at, at least something we can, but now rather than running stuff and just like blindly talking about geometric shapes, we can actually see it, right? That, then you need to close the window every time. You need to close the window every time you're running it. It's and let's see. And we do need to do one. Oh, and let's go ahead and add one more uh, thing over here. Frame. Let's see this dot. Let's see. Frame dot exit default. Let's see. All right, so it may still be running after you close this. So uh, after you close the window, so be sure to terminate it over here. Let's see. Exit on close. There we go. Um, I don't, normally it's, it's part of it, but there we go. I imported, so I typed in frame.setDefault operation to 
exit on close, which I remembered. I remember that what that's what need to be doing. What I need to be doing. I don't know why it wasn't part of uh, the. Um, I don't know why it wasn't part of this. Why why it wasn't doing that? But that's normally what you got to do. Set default frame dot set default operation. Uh, is dot. And normally it has a frame. Yeah, I just auto imported it. Exit on close, which should be three. So you can put three over here instead. So don't worry about importing anything. You can just put three there and it will work. And then it will, once you close the window, it will automatically close. Should work. I don't know why it wasn't. Oh, right, because the rectangle is easy to use as well. Okay. There you go. That takes care of it. All right. So now that we've experienced some amount of graphical setups, right? This is a lot to get forward, but what it's saying is that this this program is a canvas that we can draw on, and anything we put in the paint is what gets done. Um, so there are things we can, there are interesting we can, th interesting things I think we can do with this. Uh, this dot weight, um, I put 100 here. Whatever. If I do this, eh. Never mind. All right. So we've got this. Uh, we've got this way of drawing things here, and we've established that re that objects can have other objects as a point. Sorry, as like an attribute here. All right. Make sense? So, um, and then we can get these uh, objects to do things. Now, this isn't necessarily how objects work, but they are rather a great, the best way to show how objects work. But we're going to start uh, from here as as kind of the as the building point for it. Um, so let's go into talking about the other bits that I said we need to do. We've got the public. So now let's talk about why why things should be. I mean, let's go talk about how to actually make our stuff proper and correct. 
So let's go to Java class and let's go ahead and look at our thing called, let's create a new class called bank account. Okay. So we're going to write a class that defines a bank account. So what are the important things of a bank account, right? Uh, what are the, what, what things define a bank account? Sorry, the user's name. Yep, so we want something called the string. We'll call it the user. We don't really care. We won't care about the password. We'll take the password somewhere else. We don't want to keep it here. But also the amount of money, right? What's the package object? The package objects is I have everything into, I, so in my code, mm -hmm. I have everything organized into folders, mm -hmm. all stuff that's like into folders. And so every t so we're working in the objects folder right now. So in order for me to run it, it has to, I have to put a package objects up here. Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's just a way of organizing your, your code. Um, so double uh, balance, right? The user and the double balance, right? And let's go ahead and talk about... Um, and I'm going again. We're going to come back to the other example, but we're going to use this to talk about why things are private and how we're going to use that to go back to geometry. Okay. So, um, and now essentially what we want to do is that when we've got a, access to a bank account object, right? Essentially, what we're going to do is let me go ahead and comment out the stuff in Runner. Right? We can go like bank account. B is equal to a new bank account, right? If I want to say, hey, you've got a bank account and we want to, and you got some extra money, we could go, your balance is plus equal to, you know, 100, right? And then we could print out the bank accounts. And this is less important code that's less important for you to copy down. It's not necessary for you to copy this down. Uh, this one's fine. It says, okay, you've got 100, 100 there, right? And that's Bob's bank account. And then he's got another hundred and another hundred and another hundred deposited, right? Which isn't very much money in Japan, I know, a hundred. Um, but still Bob's and he's very proud of it. Okay, 400. <clears throat> the thing is, is that if you've got access to his bank account thing, if Bob has access to his bank account object, right? Really what he want me, if I'm the bank, Really, what I want him to do, uh, the only thing I really want from him is to be able to look at his bank account or to deposit a check, right? I don't want him to go in and say, and I don't, if I give him access to his bank account, I don't want him to be able to do this. B dot balance is equal to, uh, I guess, I think that's enough zero, sure, you know. I don't want the user to be able to immediately, I don't want, the, I don't want, if I give somebody a bank account object, the amount of money they have should be basically strictly controlled. They shouldn't be able to access it in a way, except in a way that I say is okay for them to access it, right? I, don't, I mean, obviously it's his money, but when we're talking about get, having control over computer objects, we don't want them to be able to directly manipulate sensitive parts of your program. Encapsulation, exactly. So the idea behind encapsulation is that we are pretty much going to assume we want every all the attributes of a program to be untouchable and by anybody else who uses this. So we make everything private. And now look at what we do when we make things private. So we go private string user. You don't know how weird it is for me to type just this out without putting a private there. That's how default this is. Private the string user private double balance. We don't, and now look, I get errors all over the place saying that it's private and therefore I can't access it like this. Java won't let me do it because it's a contractual obligation for it not to let me access things like that. So how do we manipulate that then? And the answer is by using methods and by using constructors. So, right, so let's build a constructor and show and give us the proper way to, bal to balance this out, right? Bank account. So let's go ahead and create a constructor by going public uh, bank account. And let's set up like the username and the so string 
user and string balance. Sorry. Uh, in, sorry, double balance. And notice I use the same terms over here. I've got user and I've got balance, and then I've got user and balance over here. Right? But I've used the same term over here. Now, what I've done is a is something called shadowing, where I've given some a local variable the same um, the same name as a um, as a sorry, I've given a local variable the same name as a class variable, right? The same sorry as an instance variable, right? User user balance balance the same name, and you might be going okay, so. Uh, Java automatically understands that if I go balance is equal to balance, it'll do exactly what I want. It says, yes, it will take balance, what's in balance and sort in balance, the local variable. In my program, it it bolds the, in, uh, the instance variables, the ones that belongs to the actual bank account, and the one that belongs to the method. And you might be saying, hey, this is stupid. Obviously, you should be doing it, you should be giving it a different uh, name. But actually, if you were auto-generated, it would actually give you these as the parameters. So to tell you the difference between a local variable and a uh, instance variable, we're going to use a very useful keyword called this. This means this object. This, this means me. It means this bank account. So, and it's like having a, it's like having access to a variable at all time, uh, a variable that refers to this object at all times. So we can go, this object's balance is equal to the balance that was passed in. And notice that this that, that it sets, you know, colors and bolds these differently. This object's username is equal to the username that was just passed in. And you might think this is crazy and stupid, but actually, if I go ahead and, uh, you know, um, add in, if I generate code, Right, if I do this, generate a constructor. Let's just go ahead and generate a constructor. This is the way that the code's automatically generated. So that this user so that this keyword refers to this object, this one that I'm currently inside of and working on. And this is incredibly useful because if for no other reason, then I can type this and then get access to all the methods I've written so far. And just refresh my memory of what I've got. Okay? So this will set up the initial balance, but how do I change the balance, right? So we want to do that with like a um, public, um, with like some public. So to subtract money, we'll do some kind of public method called make transaction, right? And this will, uh, you know, let's assume this is like a debit card or something. This will withdraw money from the bank account, right? In, sorry, double amount. And what this will simulate is basically making the transaction. And what it will do is that it will take this balance, this user's balance, and subtract the amount from it. Minus equals amount. So that's one way we can manipulate the money. Okay. And to increase the balance, we will do public void. And these are void methods because they are now normally methods, they either have to return something or they print something, right? And void methods almost always print something. And these void methods aren't printing anything. This is because what these void methods are doing is that they are changing the internal state of our uh, program, okay. Public void. Um, make. Let's go ahead and and say make. Deposit. To increase the money. And that will double amount. This dot, balance plus equals the amount. So we've got the user, we've got the balance, 
and we've got a way to make this method. And now we've got a, um, a you know, we've got a way to make money. We essentially put money in and take money out. But that's not necessarily useful to you, right? Because if you're a user, then you also want to be able to see how much money you have so you know you can make a transaction, right? So, um, and as far as we know, the only way we were able to do that earlier was by printing out b.balance. And the answer is that we have to make a method instead to do, us, to do that, to give us, to let us see how much uh, there is. And so we have two special methods that we generally, so generally what happens is that we have two special methods um, for, for any variable. Get, get and set methods. So the formal name for them is accessors and mutator, but nobody calls them that except for textbooks. Everybody calls them by the better names, which are getter and setter, right? So a getter gets a, a local variable and a setter sets a local variable. Now we don't want people changing their, their bank account information in a way we don't want them to. So obviously we won't give them a setter, right? But we, what we are going to do is that we are going to give them a getter, right? We are going to give them a getter. So um, let's go. And so getters are pretty much straightforward. You can do public void, and then you just type get, and then you type in the variable name, balance, right? And then, sorry, well, it's not a void. The type is instead the type of whatever you want to return. So public double get balance. And then you just return balance. And remember, this is going to copy what's in here um, out so that you get a copy of the amount that's in there. But this will not change that. Right? You got to keep, so if you're returning an object though, you got to be careful to make sure that they can't change that object on you. So public double get balance, return the balance. Right. So now if I go over here, I can set up the bank account to be different. I can set up the bank account to have start out with maybe, you know, a thousand, you know, what is that? A hundred thousand yen in it. Right. Or it needs to be a username. So we'll go ahead and we got to say, you got to start with the username. Bob. And his name is... And so we've set up that he has 100,000 yen, right? And so now we'll simulate uh, him making a single transaction of, let's say, 1,300 yen, right? And then we're going to, he's going to deposit another 10,000 yen. Okay. And now, how do I print? How does he print out how much money he has? He goes Bob B dot get balance. We run this, and we'll subtract thirteen hundred, add ten thousand, and he has that much yen. It's a fairly straightforward process. So we're gonna see. So we're gonna take a a, a break, and then we're gonna see how to apply this to the uh, to the GUI elements, and then how to properly encapsulate things. Because our goal is that these rectangles and these points. What they really should do is that they should know how to draw themselves because what we're doing is that we're using them to draw things. We're using them to draw things. And what would be really nice is that if we could uh, create a point or a rectangle, if we, sorry, if we could use the point, if we could create like a line segment and then tell, tell the line how to draw itself. And then we could create a rectangle and tell how to draw itself or something like that. Right? All right. So take a 10 minute break. <laughs>